okay, we want to estimate a variance covariance matrix. Variance covariance matrix uh, useful for portfolio calculations, also very useful for making value at risk estimations. Um, first thing we need to do here is consider the the, port, the assets. Um, so we have stock prices for General Electric, Microsoft, Johnson Johnson, Kellogg's, Boeing, IBM, and we have annual data between 93 and 2004. So we have 12 observations, and um, we want to estimate the returns. First thing we can do take log difference. So the the next year divided by the former year the previous year gives us the return from 2000 and 1993 to 1994 and we pull that down uh, this approach I took from the Simon the and spreadsheet I took from Simon Beninga's textbook uh, financial modeling it's a really good book and he outlines um, different ways of estimating variance covariance, portfolio, option theory, so on. A uh, very good book. Okay. We then proceed to estimate the average uh, return over the now 11 observations. So we say average and the average value for average return Continuously compounded return for General Electric is 23.6%. We can pull that across. Likewise, standard deviation. We can work out for the single assets. Eventually, we want to set this out for the portfolio. Uh, standard deviation, 31, 32.17. Uh, variance. Likewise, and we can just drag across our cell and change this to percentage, perhaps. Okay, now below we need to, to, est to estimate the excess returns. We take the return in any given year. And we subtract away uh, the average, average observation, which is this, and we do F4, or we can leave, and we can pull this across. And then if we put in F4, if we hit F4 in each of these uh, references, we can lock the cell reference. So F4 means that when we pull the row down in a moment, we can in each instance subtract lock the cell reference to the average of the of the returns. So we take these six cells in the row and just pull down. And if we go back and have a look, we can verify that this is the return from in January 1996. And we're subtracting by the average value. Likewise, if we take the observation here, it's IBM return 1994, subtract away the average. Likewise here, it's the general electric return subtract away the average value so we have the excess returns they go from excess returns then to calculating to calculate the variance covariance matrix we take our excess returns and we take the transpose so initially we say take the transpose 
open bracket, M mode, transpose, open bracket again, transpose it to matrix, close brackets, and we're multiplying by the matrix again, close brackets, and we're dividing by n minus we're dividing by n minus 1 observation, so we have 11 excess returns, we divide by 10. And shift, control, return. Then we take the entire range, the 6 by 6 matrix, come back up again, control, shift, return. And we have our values, we can convert to percentages. And we can examine, we can look at the values here and compare. And what we notice is uh, they are the same. So in fact, if we take this range of values, 3.6, to 3.6, to 5.7, to 5.7, to 8.96, to 8.96, to 1.84, to 1.84. What becomes clear is that we have on the diagonal, diagonal of this matrix, we have the variance for the asset returns, and on the off diagonal, we have the covariances, which are symmetric. So this value corresponds to this value. The uh, covariance between Microsoft and GE, 7.58, but likewise the covariance here is captured uh, in this symmetric matrix. Likewise, this will be equal to this, and so on. So this is our variance covariance matrix, and it can be used for working out uh, details, uh, for portfolio construction, working out the variance of a portfolio useful for um, value at risk type uh, calculations.